Hi, and welcome to another edition of the AdvisaCon webinar series. Thanks for joining us for getting visibility into Microsoft Project for the Web files with Microsoft Power BI. Today's presentation is brought to you by AdvisaCon, where we help you with tools and training to maximize your impact, productivity, and purpose. My name is David Hogan, the director of AdvisaCon's Academy, and I will be your guide for today's presentation. One of the memorable highlights of my young life was showing up at Wallace Park in the Northwest neighborhood of Portland, Oregon, and learning that as a nine-year-old, I had been drafted into the Little League majors. Although I could field and throw pretty well, I simply froze in the batter's box. They kept telling me to keep my eye on the ball. It often seemed like the ball was coming right at me. So I would simply close my eyes, sometimes swinging, other times just hoping to avoid bodily injury. I'll never forget the day the coaching finally took root in my mind, and I actually saw that bat hit the ball for the first time. It was amazing. Today's discussion will be about how you can keep your eye on the ball when managing projects using Microsoft Project for the Web, and in a manner of speaking, hit the ball farther and more often with less effort. If your organization executes projects well, you are more likely to both succeed at strategic initiatives and increase the velocity at which you operate. Well, today's agenda will first involve just taking a brief look at the Power Platform and Power BI. And then we'll talk a little bit about what Microsoft Project for the Web is and how it fits into the Microsoft Project family some background on project dashboards and what they include and why that might be important, and the meat of this, setting up the project for the web Power BI template, a multi-project portfolio-like dashboard. And then beyond that, we're also going to learn how to add some additional custom visualizations into this Power BI template. Trust me, it's gonna be exciting. So first, the Power Platform and Power BI. So what is the Microsoft Power Platform? It includes a number of components, as you see in the graphic here, including Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, Virtual Agents, and Power Pages. And these components are underpinned by data connectors, which allow the system to connect to many different data sources, an artificial intelligence builder, and the Microsoft Dataverse, the data warehouse for all types of applications that utilize data across this platform. The reason that the Power Platform was put together in the first place was to put together an opportunity for people to build their own solutions, what we might call citizen developers, because they couldn't always afford to go out and hire professional programmers, or many companies just didn't have the resources to develop solutions quickly enough to keep up with their businesses' needs. And so the Power Platform put together these, again, low code, drag and drop type platforms that allow people to put together their own solutions for a variety of problems and challenges. So Power BI is a business analytics tool. It allows us to put data-driven insights into everyone's hands to inform better and faster decisions and help us be more competitive. It allows us to convert data into visualizations so that we can more intuitively understand them as opposed to looking at rows and columns of numbers. We can also create project dashboards to measure progress and the achievement of key performance indicators. And it helps you monitor and manage project risks and prevent catastrophic failures. Microsoft Project for the Web, let's dive into that. As you may already know, there is a Microsoft Project product family that includes Project Online, Project Online Desktop, Project Server, Project Desktop, and here now, Project for the Web. And sometimes we call this P4W. What exactly is it? A great understanding can be gained from this statement here. It's a simple project management experience that is easy to use, web-based, and especially created for informal project managers. It is built on the Microsoft Power Platform and Project for the Web data is actually stored in the Microsoft Dataverse. Project for the Web is also integrated with Microsoft 365 Groups, so it works with Microsoft 365 tools that you already use to collaborate with your teammates on projects. 
what is not included in project for the web? Well, as you may have guessed, since it is a simple project management experience created for informal project users, it does not include some more advanced project management features, such as creating baselines and critical paths and projects, and additionally resource and financial management components. It also does not natively allow you to manage a portfolio that contains multiple projects. In the Microsoft Project family, we traditionally have had the ability to create sub-projects that then are connected to a master project that allows us to get an overall view of how our portfolio of projects might be performing. Project for the web, on the other hand, is a more lightweight tool, and as I mentioned a moment ago, doesn't natively have portfolio management capacity. However, this was a common complaint among a variety of people, and so, Enter Power BI, giving us the ability to extract data from multiple Project for the Web files and put them into a single dashboard, effectively giving us insight into what's going on in all the projects in our portfolio. This, of course, is beneficial to project managers who typically have more than one project that they're working with, as well as leaders who want insights into all of their projects. So project dashboards. Well, this is where, we, again, we talk about keeping our eye on the ball, so to speak. Typically, these dashboards would give us insights into activity tracking so we know what people are working on. We also want it to be able to give us some indication of a project's health, meaning is it on budget or is it on time uh, or is the, you know, the scope remaining the same? We also want to be able to track progress with the accomplishment of tasks and milestones as the project goes on. And of course, it's helpful to be able to understand your team's workload and how much work is assigned, how much work has been accomplished, and how much work there is left remaining to do. And of course, as much as possible, you want to create an early warning system that gives you an idea if problems are about to occur within your project, giving you time to make corrections to avoid difficult situations. Uh, unlike this picture, if you're this close to a deer uh, on the road at night, uh, it's probably gonna end up in something horrible. But if your headlights are a little bit stronger and you can see a little further down the road, then you have a better chance of avoiding a problem. And that's what we want to do with the project dashboard. So let's talk now about how we go about setting up the Project for the Web Power BI template. What you will need in order to be able to utilize Power BI with Project for the Web are the following. It requires a Plan 3 or Plan 5 Microsoft Project subscription. You will also need a Power BI Desktop or Power BI Pro subscription in order to make these work together. You'll also need to contact your administrators if you're not the administrator and find out what your organization's Dynamics 365 Dataverse URL is. You will also need to know your organization's PWA URL or the URL of your project online project web app site. As you can see in the format in this graphic here on the left. So again, you want to gather uh, that information before you get started setting up the template. There are essentially three stages to setting up the Power BI template with Project for the Web. First, you need to make sure that you have Power BI desktop set up on your computer. It's simple to do and takes literally just moments. Second, we'll download the Project for the Web Power BI template. And then lastly, we'll configure the template to work with your system. Again, that's where those URLs that we mentioned in the previous slide are so important. Before we get started on this, I would just want to highlight that if you just write down this information or collect this information, it will make your life so much easier. You want to go into Google and essentially type in this phrase, use Power BI Desktop to connect with your project data. You should see an article that looks something like this. And this will, of course, will have clickable um, hyperlinks to all of the resources that you need. But in this presentation, we are gonna walk through all the steps together. First, we want to download the setup wizard, PBI desktop setup.exe from the link in the instructions. 
and then you'll locate that setup file in your downloads folder and simply double click on it to run the installation. You'll follow the instructions to complete the installation and when it's completed, you'll get a message that looks something like this. I do wanna point out one thing that I think will make things a bit easier. And it is, I don't find it really helpful to have Power BI launch the moment that you finish getting the desktop set up. So I left this vacant. Um, we'll launch Power BI later after we've downloaded the template. But if you haven't already got Power BI installed on your machine and you go through this process, you might want to vacate this button and skip that step. Second, we want to download the Project for the Web Power BI template. Again, you can follow the hyperlinks in the uh, article that I mentioned just a few moments ago, but at this URL at GitHub, you'll notice that there are a variety of Power BI templates, and we're, of course, we're interested in the Project for the Web template, so you will click on that folder. Within that folder, you'll select the file listed below, the Microsoft Project for the Web Power BI template.pbit. And you'll click on that file and select uh, download. And so at this point, you'll go to your downloads folder and open the file called Microsoft Project for the Web Power BI template, and then follow the instructions to complete the installation. Again, this is where you'll need to know your company's Dataverse URL for your Dynamics 365 and your project web app URL so that you can get access to the information. I also want to warn you that this can take a while, so just be patient. Um, I've done this a number of times, and sometimes it goes relatively easily, and sometimes it just simply takes a long time to get it all downloaded and synced up. So now, Project for the Web Power BI report. Let's dive into that. The first thing we want to understand is that there are essentially three building blocks to Power BI. The first of those are data sets. And as I noticed right here, one of the data sets is your Microsoft project for the web information. And so all reports in Power BI are built on a series of data sets. And as it mentions right here, you can get access to over 600 plus connectors and data sets and all different types of applications to feed uh, Power BI reports. The second building block are the reports themselves that in can include visualizations and pages. And when we say visualizations, you'll notice that there's a pie chart here and a donut chart here and uh, things such as that. And so visualizations and then You'll also note in just a few moments that reports can have multiple pages. OK, well, we're going to take a few moments and uh, jump over here to Power BI and just give you a look. So here is the portfolio dashboard that will come up after the syncing uh, is completed. And there is just so much information here, and you'll be so excited that you can, again, link to multiple projects in your Project for the Web collection. Looking across this particular chart, I want to just point out a couple of things. First of all, the different types of visualizations. These are what we call cards. Again, a donut chart, a bar chart, a pie chart. This is called a table visualization. And so there are many different ways to visualize data in a Power BI report. As I mentioned a moment ago, you can also set up different pages within a report. And so, of course, you can cram a lot of information into a single report. This discussion today assumes that you already know a little bit about Power BI. But again, over here, you can see filters where we can filter information, the different types of visualizations, and then fields from our data sets. And of course, these are all fields from your Microsoft Project for the Web data. So let's dive into that. I'm going to just show you as well as you look at this, that you can, you'll see a list of projects here from my Project for the Web collection. And it shows me my whole portfolio. It says I have nine projects and 376 hours of effort. 20 hours of that, 376 hours have been completed across these nine projects. And I have 356 more hours worth of work to do. I think I'm gonna need some sleep before that happens. 
You'll also notice uh, that as I click on a single project here, the, the, the metrics are interrelated. And so it will actually give me information about individual projects as I click on them. And then I can simply click a second time and it will go back to monitoring the entire portfolio. Many of these metrics are also drillable. In other words, I can click into here where it says David Hogan. I can click on this projects by project manager and it will show me the projects that I am the project manager for. So again, lots of different types of information are available here. Next, I want to show you a little bit about filters. You'll notice that filters come in different categories, like filters for just a single visual, filters for this whole page, and filters for the whole dashboard across all of these pages. And you notice that down here, I'm just going to click on this filter by project name, and you'll notice that all of the projects in my company's collection that are available to me are listed here but I can choose which of the projects I want to see in my particular dashboard. And so you can actually filter those out. And of course, it makes it a little more useful if some of your projects are more active than others. You may just, you might have 50 projects that have your name on them, but only seven or eight of them might be useful or active projects. And so filtering is really helpful there. Awesome. I just want to show you some other pages here. For example, uh, in my project for the web collection, I might be able to look at the portfolio timeline and it shows me the, the projects in my portfolio and the time span that is covered by those. I can look at my resource dashboard and see uh, how many resources are assigned and information about those people and what they're doing. And I can even create a custom dashboard. Of course, when we started the discussion today, I mentioned you'd be able to do that as well. And so here, for example, I've created a, a table visualization by clicking over here in visualizations and choosing a table. And then I went through here in my collection and chose different projects and then different fields out of the project tasks to create this particular visualization. I'm just gonna click on it so you can see that I've checked some boxes here and those columns have been included. And then in my filters, I've been able to say, well, show me things that are overdue. And then beyond that, I went into more sophisticated uh, filtering and said, well, show me ones that are, uh, where the value is on or before June 1st, meaning it should have been done by June 1st and now we're 90 days past that. So these are things that are really late. These are, I said, 60 days late. And so that might just be something that I need to zero in on. Again, it's not part of the standard um, dashboard, but just something that might be helpful in my situation. In addition, I thought it'd be interesting to create a visualization of my particular project tasks that are assigned to me and information about them. So here they're assigned to me and I want to know the project name. I also probably want to know um, the task name. So I'll come down here in the project task group and I'll choose task name. In addition, I'm going to choose the date that the task is supposed to be finished. So I'll come up here and choose finish. And you'll notice it gives me a, a long explanation of date. I'm just gonna go to that right here and say, I just want a simple version of the date. And so these are my tasks that are currently in progress. So I think you're getting the idea that you can include um, all different types of information to help you zero in on what is important to you. As if that weren't enough excitement, I wanna introduce you to something uh, totally different that I'm kind of excited about. And that is that sometimes the data that you need in your portfolio isn't necessarily in the project management system. Sometimes you have spreadsheets that contain information or uh, databases that you're connected to that are not part of the project schedule or the project management system, but are important to your project. And you wanna be able to include those in your dashboard even though they're not related to project man your project management system. And so uh, let's take a look at uh, an opportunity here. 
You can use what we call out-of-the-box visualizations, meaning visualizations that aren't necessarily part of the standard uh, Power BI collection to uh, help you gain different insights and try new and exciting things. One of the things that I was introduced to just this last week was a sand key diagram. It measures the flow of things like energy or money or website traffic or materials or even information uh, through multiple stages in a system. It could be tracking uh, where materials go through a warehouse, or as you can see in this particular visualization, it's measuring traffic and where it comes into a website and where people are stopping off as they go through the website. It's just giving you, again, a visual representation of the flow of these things as opposed to looking at columns of numbers, because that can be fairly complicated when you have multiple stages in an approach. To utilize a sand key diagram, you simply need a source, meaning where the flow starts, a destination where it went to, and then how much traffic or how much flow was there is measured as the weight. And of course, as you can see in this diagram, it's measuring several destinations. And I thought it would just be fun to work with an example of this. For example, if I have a project where change orders are happening and I want to be able to just see the flow of change orders represented in a visual way. So I've created a spreadsheet here that shows the different months that my project is going on and the different change order statuses, meaning were the change orders approved or denied or are they still pending? And then how many uh, change orders in that month were approved, how many were denied, and how many are still pending. And so I want to represent that visually. So let's jump back over to Power BI and see how we might accomplish that. So here I'm going to uh, show you something super exciting. You, you see this ellipses here? In addition to the collection of standard visualizations, I can click here and I can say I want to get more visualizations. And I'm going to go up into the search box here and I'm just going to look for the Sankey chart. And here it shows up, the Sankey chart, and I can simply download it at this point. Now I've already downloaded it, so I'm not going to do that at this point, but that's what you would do the first time you use it. It's represented here by this icon. So I'm going to click on that and add it to my dashboard. And that's not exactly what I did. <laughs> My apologies. There we go. I'm going to create a new visualization and just drag it up here where I want it. And now, as I mentioned before, each Sankey chart needs a destin it needs a source, a destination, and a weight. So I need to go find that spreadsheet that has those change orders in it. So I'm going to come up here to my data sources and choose. Excel workbook because that's what this particular data source was. And just open that. And you'll see that the first tab in that spreadsheet is called change order data. So I'll select that and load it. And now as you look over here to our selection of fields and, and data available to us, in this visualization, you'll see here the change order data. And so the source, again, meaning where the process starts is in a certain month. And then I need to find out as a destination, were they approved, denied, or are they still pending? And then again, the weight, meaning how much traffic is the quantity of the change orders, and I'll put those in as the weight. So now you see I have a sand key chart that's measuring the flow of my change orders. You'll notice, for example, if I click up here on January, that uh, very few um, change orders were approved. Uh, most, excuse me, most of them were approved. A few are still pending and even less were denied. However, down here in May, wow, a huge chunk were approved and again, some are still pending and so on. And I think you get the idea. And again, if we wanted to make it complicated, we could have multiple stages in this flow and measuring measuring how the change orders are being processed again, or how material or how energy flows or any of those things, 
You can find new and creative ways to again to visualize data to give you insight into how things are flowing uh, in your project or in your organization and so on. I absolutely love that. All right. So takeaways from this discussion. First, Project for the Web is a simple project management experience that is easy to use, web-based, and especially created for informal project managers. We, we can get portfolio level visibility into our collection of Project for the Web projects using the Project for the Web Power BI template and the Power BI desktop. And then in addition to all of the things that come in the Power BI uh, template for Project for the Web, we can also customize and create additional pages that allow us to create additional insights into our specific need. And of course, I want to encourage you to explore the out-of-the-box visualizations that are available to you in Power BI. So again, thank you for your time and for joining us today. And I want to encourage you to visit the Advisacon Academy at advisacon.thinkific.com. And as always, if there's anything we can do to assist you with your projects, please reach out to us. Uh, as you see our phone number here under contact us, and you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, take advantage of the many YouTube videos out there that are available to the public. Again, thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time on an AdvisaCon webinar. Have a great day.